Oh no! I'm not gonna kill me! I'm gonna kill me like melon! I'm trapped in this goddamn alleyway! There's no way to go! I need a weapon! I need some kind of weapon! I need a... No! No, I can't! I got it! I got it! The greatest weapon of them all! The frying pan! Hi everybody and welcome to the channel, I am Richard. Today I am quite excited because I'm gonna take out zombie side to you. I'm gonna open this box, I'm gonna put it all on the table for you and show you all the content in this. Now zombie side itself really needs no introduction. It's been on the wallpaper for over a decade. It sold over 2 million copies. And this is the second edition. There's some new art in here, there's some new survivors in here, and uh, there's a bunch of zombies. It's from one to six players. It says an hour on the box, but it really depends on what kind of mission you're doing. It could go way beyond that. It's from 14 years and above. I mean, there's a bunch of adult content in here, so might watch out for that one. But it's a really, really fun game where you and some buddies just try to survive the zombie apocalypse. So I'm going to open this box. I'm going to put it on the table for you, and I'm going to show you everything in it. But before I do that, I feel like a game like Zombicide deserves to be painted. So I want to show you the painting steps that I went through with this box from the Army Painter before I put it out on the table for you. Before you start your miniature painting career, there's a few things that I would recommend you to get. And I want to start out by saying that I am not an expert. I'm still a noob, a rookie, a novice, whatever you want to call it, I'm it. I literally painted my first miniature six months ago. So there's my career started. I have no artistic education. I'm not a painter. I'm not anything like this. I mean, I, I, I might have done a drawing when I was like 12, but that's it. So I just want to give you some tips that really helped me to start doing this hobby and actually loving it and getting better and better at it. The first thing you would need is some paint of course without paint it's pretty useless to paint in this box from army painter you get everything you need to paint the song beside second edition this one is specially made for this one you get everything you need in here you get the primers you get the washes you need the colors everything it's all just done for you you also get a nifty little pencil here this one is quite good you can paint well, almost the whole mini with just this pencil. It's really cute and quite useful. Plus it says zombie side and it's quite cool, isn't it? Beside that one, I also had three other pencils. These ones are also from the Army Painter. It's from their Dungeon and Dragon set. And here you have a little detail brush. You have a dry brush and then uh, the other brush here from, from before, a medium brush. So these ones are also quite good. Beside that, I have a handle. A handle is quite great to hold the miniature. You do not need this. You could just put some sticky on the miniature and put it on a stick and hold it. I did that in the beginning. But this one is a lot easier. You can just claim on the little mini here and then you hold it. Let me show you. Here you have this is the this one. This miniature you also get in the little box here. It's a special edition uh, fill. But this handle just makes it so much easier to paint and you can really get into all the little spots. You can turn it around really easy. It's quite great. Beside that, you also need some primers. These army painter primers are amazing if you're going to prime a lot of minis. And I'm going to tell you about that in a little bit. And I'm going to show you how to actually use them as well. And then we have some washes. This is their quick shade wash from army painter. Also a really big time saver as you just dip the whole mini. You could wipe or dry the uh, paint on the wash with this one but you can also just dip the miniature and then shake off the the wash when it becomes too much dry it up a little bit and then it's all done this one will save you a lot of time as well 
And the end, the last thing, is the varnish. This one you spray on the miniature when you have painted, when you have washed them, detailed them, when they are done, you spray them with varnish and they will last a lifetime. And before we start painting, there's one more thing I would like to show you. You might have heard about wet palettes. Well, this one is my homemade wet palette. I have a little lid here from just a lunchbox, some ordinary household paper, and then I put some water on this one. Make it good and soaked in. Then I take some, some sandwich papers here. This is just ordinary sandwich paper. And then I just put it on here, like that, and that. So when I paint, I put my paint on this wet palette here, my homemade wet palette, and it will just keep the paint a little bit more moisty, a little bit longer, which just gives me a bit more time to paint. The last thing I have that also helps me a lot when I do miniature painting is these really, really cool glasses. Makes me look like Iron Man, right? And it even has a little light on it there, look at that. It makes me look really awesome. But this one, I mean, I don't have that bad eyesight. I actually have quite good eyesight. But there's some details on these small fellers that just makes your life a living pain. And these glasses makes it a little bit easier to actually spot what is on his little ass. Now, I use the Army Painters primers because they are actually skin color in these ones as well. So, when you prime these ones, you don't only prime them, you also color the figure's skin. And it just saves you an immense amount of time. The Survivor, for example, I have primed them with the barbaric flesh to give them the skin color of, well, a human. And the zombie, I have primed them with the necronic flesh to give them that greenish zombie skin. And once these are base colored and washed, they are going to look great. And everything that can help me save time when I'm going to spray paint and paint this amount of figures is just worth gold. So when you're going to start priming, you need to think about a few things. First, you need to, well, kind of be outdoors because it kind of smells a lot. But if you have a big garage, you could do this indoors as well. Just make sure it's well ventilated. And before you start to spray, you need to shake this one a lot. One and a half to two minutes. So basically, when your arm starts to ache, well, you're getting there. And when you spray, make sure to spray the mini with a distance for about 20 centimeters. I don't know what that is in inches, so don't ask me, you can google it. 20 centimeters and start from the side and go over the mini. So this, it would be like and not because that will make your mini gooey and thick. It should be a thin layer, two max three times and then turn it around to make sure that you get all the spots. There's a lot of miniatures in zombie side, so you need to be quite efficient. Now, we all saw that the primer here saved us a lot of time. And I forgot to say that you can also prime, you can put these ones up in a line and then prime a lot of them at the same time. Just be aware that you would have to go through them one by one afterwards to just check out if you missed any spots. I usually just put up a couple of them and then spray them and then move on to a couple of them and spray them so it doesn't become too many miniatures at once. But when you paint the zombies, in zombie side you have a lot of the same figure when it comes to the zombies. So the zombies itself, I would paint this one for example, this one's it's all black and yellow colors. So on this one I would paint it black. Then I would move on to the next figure that looks just like him and paint that one black and so on and so on until the, that base color is done on these figures. Then I would move on to the next color and paint that one on this and then the next one and next one and so on. Kind of like a little assembly line. In this way you don't have to shift in between the colors. You don't have to clean your pencil that much. Plus you get to learn all the details and and by the time you are at the second, third and fourth one that looks the same, you will have such a speed that you just know exactly what to paint and it will just go a lot faster. When it comes to the survivors on the other hand, that's a bit different because they're all unique, they do not look the same. 
So on little Phil here, I would paint one base color and then move on to the next base color and just do him in one go. Now we are ready to start to paint. And I'm going to start to paint this one with the dead black. Before you start painting, you need to give this one a good shake as well, just as the primer. Because there's so many pigments in these colors, they're so thick, that you really need to shake them around a lot to get that color really to be a thicken. So now we're ready to actually do some painting. I'm going to use the dead... <clears throat> so now we're ready to do some actual painting. Now I'm using the dead black here on the black on this firefighter and just as the primer you need to good, give this one a good shake because there's a lot of thick pigment in this one and they all gather up in the bottom here of this little bottle so you need to just shake it around to really activate the pigments and well, bring them to life. They shouldn't be asleep at the bottom, right? They should be all around this color. And now these colors are really, really good. So you shouldn't put too much out on your palette to start with. It just, I mean, I can paint this whole figure with just this little drop. You shouldn't empty the bottle out here because it's, it's really, really thick and good color. So you don't need that much. And now before you start painting, you should really look at the miniature to find out all his details, see what you are actually supposed to paint and not supposed to paint with the color you're using right now. Uh, and if you have any reference pictures, that is great. I mean, online on the internet, there's so many pictures of the different characters from Zombicide, so I'm sure you could find some kind of reference in there just to see the details. I mean, some details of these small minis are really hard to figure out what they actually are. And sometimes a picture is just worth a lot. And then you can follow that picture to see the colors. You can follow it to see where you're actually supposed to paint and not supposed to paint. I've done a lot of mistakes where I've painted details that just shouldn't have been painted. Or painted places that was just completely wrong. So... A good reference, that's a good thing. This one is easy. I mean, it's all black and yellow, so that's, this one is no-brainer. So now I'm gonna stop talking and just start painting, and I'm gonna fast-forward you a little bit here so you don't have to see all this boring stuff. You can see these small, small places in here. You can still use this medium brush. I mean, the detail brush is really just for those really, really, really small places that this one can't fit. It's like I said, you can paint almost the whole menu with just this one pencil. It's quite good. And the great thing with painting zombies is that if you should mess up, you can just cover them in blood. So that was the pants. Took me about four minutes, maybe. And again, you can see the handle here. It's quite good to hold it when you hold it upside down or you rotate it. Plus, when you paint, your fingers are going to get a bit sweaty. And if you hold the mini, the paint will eventually disappear on the places that your fingers touch it. So this line down here is going to be yellow. And uh, this one here is yellow, yellow, and this one is orange. I'm gonna make it orange. This one as well. So the rest is just black. And I dipped it to just the top of this pencil. I don't dip it all the way down here. Because if you dip it all the way down here to the base, you will get paint in here, which will make the, the fiber expand. So you should only dip the tip of the pencil and not the whole thing. And if you can, you should always start with the bottom layer. Oh man, I just... Oh, 
no worries i can fix that with blood right like i said if you when you start you should always start with the bottom layers because it's just a lot easier for you to paint i can just dip the brush in here and just make out the corners but if i were already painted here i wouldn't be able to do that So now I've done all the big spots with the black hair on this zombie and I'm just going to go over it now with a little detail here just to get into these small small spots here but otherwise and we have up here as well but otherwise this one black is done and then I'm going to move on to the next one. Now you can see that this black color here is really really thick it just covers up the spots so quick. I used to uh, when I started here six months ago long ago I, I took cheap paints. I was a bit cheap so I took cheap paint and but it just took so much longer time for me I mean I had to cover up the model several times and let's face it in the end it actually shut me in the foot because it meant that I used more color and I had to buy even more color faster so I was actually losing money in the end instead of saving money and that was quite stupid uh, we have the little black spot up here as well there we go. Now you have a little opportunity here to actually go around the model and just make sure that you haven't missed any spot like that one down there. And this one just saves you a lot of a headache further on because if you noticed halfway through that you have missed some spots, it's just going to drive you crazy. I have actually painted this one black. That one should be yellow. So I'm going to change that one later. But this is also just to show you that you make mistakes, but none of these mistakes are reversible are not reversible you know you can always go back you can always change it but i'm also doing this video to show you things like this that even though i made a mistake here i can go back and i can fix it it's no worries So now all of these fellas are base coated black. Now it's on to the orange and yellow and then in the end I will do the small little details on the, the iron pieces. 
So for the yellow details on this one, I'm gonna use the the Wanda Blonde. And first I need to shake it, remember? And there you have it people, these are the four firefighters from Zombicide 2nd edition. Almost done, they still need to be washed and they still need to get some blood on them. So that was four of them and now I only have 76 left. Piece of cake, right? So now I have painted the shoes and pants and the sweater on these ones. I have not painted the sign, but it's getting quite late and I feel like I need to stretch a little bit. I need to spend a little time with my family. So I'm gonna keep on painting tomorrow. Hey people, I'm back again. Today it's Saturday and the sun is shining. So I'm thinking, you know, why not paint outside? <sighs> It's gonna start rain, I better move in. And there you have the four runners, the runner females. Gray, purple and green, white, looking cool. So that was day number two. I've been painting a lot of miniatures now, so I'm gonna go in and have a little break, spend some time with my family and paint some more miniatures tomorrow. Now it's okay, we're getting into day three and this is where the aching starts to come, you know, I feel my shoulders are getting sore, my arms are a bit sore as well, my butt is a little bit sore from all the sitting down, but I'm thinking that I'm just gonna warrior through this and just get this done, so uh, hopefully I get a few hours of painting now and uh, get a few zombies done.
was the wrong. Oh. <laughs> I have just finished base coding the last zombie. I only have one miniature left and that is Odin. Now I chose to finish this off with Odin because my son's name is Odin and I just thought that that would be a cool little way to finish this base coding off. After this one I'm down to painting the bases and doing some blood but let's get this one done I have base coated every miniature in Zombicide's 2nd edition and Washington C set. Oh. I almost can't believe it. There was a moment there where I thought I wasn't gonna make it. What have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> but I am there. This is awesome. Now the next step is to throw on some blood and some washes. So I'm using glistering blood here from the Army Painter Zombicide kit. And I'm going to apply the blood by a brush. But also with one of these here and spray it on them a little bit. Let's start by just testing the spray a little bit. Ooh, looks kind of cool, like a little blood splatter on him. I'm gonna zoom in on these later. I'm gonna use that technique and of course also just take the blood, blood, uh, brush here and paint on some blood on him. So now I have painted some blood on a few of the zombies just to make these one look like they have old blood. The rest of them I'm going to paint after the wash to make it look like new blood. Now, there's a few different washes in this zombicide pack from the army painter. You have the strong tone, the flesh wash and dark tones. I'm gonna go out here and just try a different ones of these here on all the zombies here and the survivors. And then I'm also going to try the, the quick dip here on some of them, just to see the difference on the board. So this is the dark tone here I'm gonna start with and you should shake these lightly. You shouldn't shake these as much as you shake the paints because you don't want too many bubbles in these. So I'm gonna start with this uh, little security guard here. Shake it lightly. Put it out here. Now I also have a, a bit of paper here at hand just to wipe out if it gets too much in some places. So 
let's start here. I'm gonna apply them from the top and then go down with this. We start up at the top and we go down. And you really wanna get this model soaked up in every place here so it really gets into all the little crooks and spaces here. Now this is not going to look pretty in, in the start here. You're going to get a bit scared because you're going to think that you have ruined your model, but you have not. This needs to dry for 24 hours, then you can use it again. So, so as you can see, I apply it from the top, and I go down on the miniature here, just to get it into every little crook and create it. So as you can see, I started from the top here and then I go down on the miniature here from the head to the feet. You're gonna make sure you cover the whole miniature here with this with this wash. And it's going to look a bit awful at start, but don't get scared. It's going to look better once it has dried. It needs to dry and then it will look good again. And every time you see that there's too much and it's good, you can just take the pencil and just wipe it off here. I think it becomes too much. But it should look like shading in the end. You really want to make sure that you get all the little pieces in. And, uh, and cracks here on the miniature, otherwise it's going to look a bit weird. And this one hasn't even dried yet. I have just done the strong tone on this one. But you can already start to see the difference in these two. This one just looks a lot more realistic. It just does so much to the miniature. Love it. I'm getting there. Ah, oh, damn it, I'm getting there. I'm getting closer by the minute. Putting on washes is not at all as time consuming as putting on base coats. I did like 50 yesterday in two or three hours, something like that, I don't really remember. But it doesn't take at all that much time. So far, I have only used the, the brush on washes. And I will do some quick shade dipping in a, on the last ones here, just to show you how it actually looks when you do the quick shade dipping. Okay people, I'm going to show you how to do the quick shade mode here. First, you need to open the jar by using a screwdriver. Then we need to stir the content, not shake, stir. Stir it carefully and good until everything has mixed up together. And wipe off the stick. Now we're ready to dip the minis. So the way I do this is that I take the a wrench, carefully grab the bottom of the mini, the base, not too hard to bend it. Dip the whole mini down, let it run off. Shake it a little bit now, and then we do the big shakes. And now you got a dipped mini. Be sure to take the paper and just take away the most excessive shading pieces. So if there's big pools, be sure to just take that away, and maybe in the face. Now, this should dry for 48 hours, and this done. You can also take a pencil and just wipe it off. Just dip it down in the can and take it off on the mini. And I almost prefer to do that, because when you do it with a pencil, you can control the flow of the shade a lot more. The minis have now been drying for a few days after the washes, and it's time for me to do some basing. The way I like to do bases is I just take a sandwich paper, I put the miniature on the sandwich paper. I just take some 
stone grey paint. I hold with one finger on the base and then I push the pencil down on the base and just move it around. Really, really careful with the feet here so we don't get paint up on the feet. And then we just paint around the base. And why I have the sandwich paper here is it's really not to not paint on my, uh, my table here because it's already painted on. It's to be able to just turn it around quite easy. And if you need to, you can hold the mini, but just hold it really, really, really light so you don't take away any color or anything. Remember, we haven't put varnish on yet, so we have to be careful still. Paint around the base. And it's done. I almost can't believe this, but I am almost done. I've done the base coat. I've done the washes. I've done the bases. So now I'm only down to some details, dry brush, and then some varnish, and I'm done. The details I'm gonna do on these ones are the eyes, some eyebrows on the, on the humans, and on the zombies I'm gonna just do black eyes. Uh, and then I'm gonna put on some blood on some of the zombies now after the wash, just to make it look a little bit more fresh. So let's just get going. The way I paint eyes on miniatures is that I usually paint the white first, and then I try to just do a little black dot in the middle. Now if I get too much white around the eyes, I usually just cover it up with skin paint. That's the beauty about army painters skin paint is that it matches up completely with the primer so there will be no difference later on. Try to rest my hands on the table here, have my arms along my side. There now I got too much on this one here but I can easily make clear that out with uh, some skin paint. When you do the black dot, you should really not have a lot of paint on your brush. Just little, 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 little. There we go. We have two eyes. So first the white, and if you get too much white, Clear it out with skin color and then a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of black and just dot it right on. It's not easy, but you can do this. So the last thing in this process to get them real done is just some dry brushing. Take some white paint on the dry brush, wipe it off. There should not be a lot of paint on this one. Just a small, small, small amount. And then carefully wipe it out on the mini to get just a few highlights on them. And then carefully brush on some highlights on them. Shouldn't be too much paint on this, should be really careful with the paint. It should just be tiny, tiny, tiny white details here just to get it to pop out just a little bit more.
It's done. I can't believe it. This is this is amazing. I've done all the base coats. I've done all the washes. I've done all the bases. I've done the details, the eyes, and all other little small things there that you can't do before the wash. I've put on the the last blood on these small, beautiful little creatures here. So I really, the only thing I have left now is to just varnish them. And then I'm actually done with this project. And I'm just so thrilled. I'm so happy about this. I mean, it came out quite well, I think. I'm actually quite happy about this. I'm going to show you close-ups on all of these later on. These products from Army Painter have really helped me out uh, in so many ways. I'm so happy that I that I got them. <sighs> so let's go warnish. So there are a bunch of different warnishes out there on the market. I'm using the anti-shine one from Army Painter because I just think that a matte mini looks more natural than a shiny one. Because usually people don't walk around the street shining. And if you're one of those people, well, good for you, but I am not. I like the anti-shine one. You should spray this in an outdoor area, preferably, or in a well-ventilated area. Shake it one to two minutes until your arm hurts, once again, and spray the mini from 20 to 30 centimeters distance. Two to three thin layers.
So here you have it, people. Zombicide 2nd Edition completely painted. I have been painting in the garage. I've been painting standing up in the kitchen. I've been painting sitting outdoors. I've been painting early mornings and late, late evenings. I've been painting a lot during the last couple of weeks. And the question everybody wants to know is, how long did it take? Well, it took a lot of hours. I'm not gonna lie, it took quite some time. More or less, give and take some, this project took me 65 hours. That's a lot of hours. That's a lot of work. And I won't be doing a project like this in this magnitude anytime soon again. But this was well worth it. I'm gonna spend a lot of hours playing this game by myself with my friends. So this was well, well worth it. And I'm so happy about the result. This couldn't have become any better. I'm just so thrilled about this. Let me show you all the components in this beautiful game now. So let's take a look at all the cool things that you get in the second edition box. First of all, you get these plastic trays. These are quite cool and it's an easy way for you to keep track on what your character is actually holding. On this spot here and over here, you have the items that you're holding in your hands. The gray cards you see here, they are the beginner equipment, the starting equipment. Up in the spots up here, that is your backpack. So everything you're not holding in your hand will be in these three spots. Your life is over here. Here you have your skills. And down here is the adrenaline point meter. So these plastic trays are quite cool, I think. Of course you have a bunch of zombies in zombie side, but I've already showed you that. And these are doors. So this here, that's a closed door. And here is an open door. And then we have some objective tokens. So every mission will have an ob objective that you will need to solve. You also have some crates. These are pimp crates. So when you search these, you will get better weapons than you will get by just searching a room. Now we have more zombies. And we have different kinds of spawn points as well. You have the red spawn points. And then you also have the blue spawn points. So depending on what mission you're doing, you will have different types of spawn points. Here we have another objective. More zombies, of course. Over here, we have the noise tokens. So if you use a weapon that makes noise, for example, a chainsaw, well, that would be a noise to token for you. We have pimp mobiles. These ones can be searched to get some cool weapons, but you can also drive them. And we have cop cars as well. These can also be searched and driven as well. We have blue doors also, and more zombies of course. And then we have the starting spawn point. So these are the spots where the zombies will spawn first, and then they will go clockwise. And we have the exit point for some obje objectives. You will need to exit at a certain area. That is it. We of course have the dices. There would be no zombie side without dices. We have the first player token. We have the little colored spots here to put on your bases to keep track on your character. You have the pimp mobile card and the police card card. You have a bunch of different weapons in Zombie Side. You have Matlow cocktails, you have extra bullets, sawed off shotgun, bag of rice, uh, plenty of bullets again, pistol, submachine gun, gun blade. You have a bunch of different weapons. But you also have pimp weapons. Here you have better weapons than you have in the blue ordinary weapons. So these are the ones that you would find in a pimp crate. Golden AK-47, Army Sniper, and there will be spawns here as well, so look out. Golden Curry, Nail Bat, cool things. And then we have all the zombie activation cards. The Fatties, the Walkers, the Walkers again, Runners, Runners, Abominations, a lot of extra, extra activation as well, that's a new one. 
and the fatty rush. Really cool. And then we have the four abomination cards as well. And some besides second edition you have four different abominations that all have different kinds of abilities. Except that one, he got nothing. We have the other player cards. You have a lot of survivors in some besides second edition. You have the child ones here with the symbols up here, so these are a bit special. You have Lily, you have Lou, Ellie, Wanda, Stara, Josh, and Bunny G. Really cool survivors. And of course you have the Zombicide rulebook. In here is everything you need to start playing your game. Everything you need to know. And a bunch of missions for you so you really can just do as many missions that, that you want to and in on their website there's even more missions as well that you can do there you have it people that was some beside second edition for you so there you have it people that was some beside second edition fully painted and showing out all the things that's in the little box here on the board so there you have it people that was Zombicide 2nd Edition, fully painted. I really hope you enjoyed this video, because I enjoyed making it. Well, most of the time. And I also really hope that some of you out there that maybe have hesitated about starting painting your miniatures before, might just give it a try. If you do, please let me know by commenting down here in the comments, because that's why I made this video. I made this for the ones that maybe have hesitated, maybe haven't really dared to try paint those minis because, well, they just thought that they might fail. But I have showed you that even a rookie like myself can make great things. And if you have the right equipment, you can make it even better and easier for yourself as well. So please give me a little comment down here in the section if maybe I have inspired you in some kind of way. But also, did I make some mistakes? Did you see that I made something that didn't make sense to you? Well, let me know that as well, because I'm still learning and I want to know. Now, this is taking a lot of time for me, but I'm gonna start playing this game now. I just can't wait anymore. I'm so happy about this. Next video, I'm gonna make about Zombicide, because I'm not done with this game now. I'm gonna make Zombicide on steroids. I'm gonna pimp this game out to the max. What that means, well, you will find out in the future. So please, if you don't want to miss this, or if you just want to support me and show some love, hit the subscribe button. It really means a lot to me, and it really gives me that power to just keep on going. I really love this community. This community is so beautiful. You're, you give me so much love, and I hope that I can give you some love back by doing these videos. So please take care about each other. Keep spreading the love that you do, because you're just so beautiful, and I really, really appreciate you all. And give me a thumbs up, just for fun, right? So until next week, take care, keep spreading that love, good night.